As in, um, suppose somebody posted a really funny picture of you in their Instagram, no. and then it becomes a meme. Um, what rights do you have over your picture? Yeah, in the end, it's technically copyright infringement. But memes are a creature because no one has any control over. So, parang if you become a meme, <laughs> the first issue is who do you who do you sue? Uh, because you don't know who, uh, who even. If it becomes viral, are you going to sue the millions of people who shared it? It's really not. Uh, no, it's you really can just not say worth... thank you for making me famous. Uh, uh, thank you for making me famous. Or like, parang randomly, mamili ka ng limang taong you will sue. Limang taong na ido demand ka mo. Demand mo. Pili ka yung mga hindi mo gusto. Don't be sued. It gets very complicated. Von Cuerpo is a lawyer and a writer. Hey Von, so one of the things that always causes me anxiety is my rights to my work. As in, um, do I own the stuff? Um, what do I do if other people use it without my permission, etc., etc. So I guess the first question should be, what is the first thing a writer should do after finishing, say, a short story? At the moment of creation, because copyright is already created, so ah. um, full ownership already happened. So I don't have to go to an office and, you know, no, have it and sometimes it's not a good idea because um, if it hasn't been published yet, you don't really want to make it public. Ma uh, make it public until you've actually decided what you want to do with it. So um, under the law, at the moment of creation, it's um, so you don't have to go through those. Um, those um, ancient ways, like you have to mail it to yourself. No, 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 no. Okay. It's very clear under the law that the moment of creation, it's yours. Okay, what about, say, a piece of music? I'm a composer, I, I, I finished a song, what should I do after? It's the same for all forms of output. Even it, a painting or a film? Yeah. Even a letter, let's say I'm writing a letter to you. Mm -hmm. the, the contents of the letter, as soon as I finish writing it, is mine. Uh, suppose the letter is to me. Who owns it? You or me? You, you sent it to me eh. So. You, you own the letter, the actual letter, but I own the contents. Oh. I own the cop copyrighted the contents. So, for example, you get the letter um, for me. You can't just publish the contents of the I have letter. to get your permission. You have to get my permission. Does, does that also hold true for emails or, or, or for all forms private of messages on Facebook? Like, uh, okay, Vaughn sent me this thing, you know, that, that bastard, and then ru runs it on their Facebook. So, yes. what's that? Technically, that's copyright infringement. Aha! So, <laughs> so everyone has committed copyright <laughs> infringement uh, at some point. Just to some extent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you only really own that thing that you received, but you, you, you cannot own the actual contents of that. Yeah, so um, what's the legal definition of content? It's not really a word that's used legally. Mm -hmm. So um, when we're talking about copyright, it's basically everything that you're capable of producing in artistic or literary. Children! Not, not <laughs> that are not actual. <laughs> okay. But generally, it's covered by artistic or literary um, point of view. So um, yeah, anything you write, anything you sculpt or paint, or uh, no, that's really covered by copyright. Yeah, so uh, suppose I write a novel. What rights do I have over this novel? I know I have the publishing rights. Yeah. And then what else? The film rights? Yeah. The easiest way to think about um, everything you, your rights over everything you create is you think of it as a piece of property. When we say I own something, we don't really break it down to several rights. Eh, diba? Parang, what rights do I have if I own a property? I have the right to use it. I have the right to possess it. I have the right to sell it. I have the right to break it down to smaller pieces mm -hmm. and give it away. I have yeah. the right to donate it. So basically, if you think of it that way, you your rights mo over your mm -hmm. over your intellectual property. Under under um under the law, there are really yung rights mo are really two things. Eh. Yung detalyate is yung economic rights, which we're very familiar with, which is the right to publish, right to distribute, right yeah. to sell, right to dramatize or turn into a film. That's economic rights. So how you can make money out of it. And then yung isang yung other part niya is yung detalyate yung moral rights. Ang moral rights naman is yung rights to for the artist or for the creator 
to um, protect yung personal connection niya to the art. So, attribution. What does that mean? Kasi, kanya, um, you created it, eh, so meron kang connection to it, di ba? Yeah. Ang pinaka-basic ng moral, ng moral right would be the right of attribution. Mm-hmm. Na if I write this, and then I see it being published, I You can, have to say, oh, I wrote it. I wrote this. Mm-hmm. If someone decides na parang, oh, sige, I bought the distribution rights, pero um, I'm going to put chapter 4, as chapter 1 and chapter 1 is chapter 4 you can say no you can't do that I mm-hmm. gave you the rights to the book as you it cannot is. change it uh, um, so yung right to stop people from basically tampering with your book also the right to update for example um, let's say I, you, you came out with a book and then hindi mo gusto like parang yung typos and daming typos and daming issues you want to put another paragraph or something then you also have the right to update. Na ikaw, like parang not another person can just update it or change it. You have the right to actually do that. So those are moral rights. Hindi siya as strong as economic rights kasi no, no one really thinks of yung mga ganong rights eh. Pero yung mga ganong rights is ano, is it actually yung yung output mo, yung output mo as an artist or as a writer. Yeah, I've always work. wondered how people can, you know, co-write something. Yeah. How yeah. do you divide the work? How do you divide the work? Ang alam ko si um, Neil Gaiman at si Terry Pratchett, they mm-hmm. were actually... For good omens. For good yeah. omens, they were actually... <laughs> Like, oh, I'll do chapter 1, kukwento ko sa'yo yung chapter 1, oh, do chapter 2. Mm. And then, okay, natukong nagawa mo na yung chapter 2, okay, ako yung gagawa ng chapter 3. So, yun, very clear. Like, I guess if they wanted to divide the work, they'd be like, you own chapter 2, 5, and 7. I mm-hmm. own chapter 1, 4, and 8. Pero, I would assume, for example, for script writing, dalawa. Yeah, as in, um, there are movies that have 10 writers. Yeah. And then, the, the whole, the, the, there's a squabble over who gets the there's final a, credit. Correct. Even with songs, di ba yung, ano, Song ni Beyonce, Run the World. Uh, mm-hmm. There's like eight or nine okay. writers. So, so do they divide the royalties? <laughs> they should, di ba? They yeah. should. Kasi um, co-owners eh. So as co-owners of intangible right, hindi clear kung saan yung ano, up to what you own. So ang assumption, you all own it equally. But first, before we uh, we continue to other topics, uh, can we offer you something to drink? Yeah, I'd like red wine. Okay, red wine please. This is our assistant Gamba. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Okay, so cheerio. Cheers, thank you. So, um, suppose I write something while I'm employed by, say, a publishing company that didn't publish my book, or okay. say, an advertising company, but I'm using their computers, I'm using their corriente, mm-hmm. but it has nothing to do with my work for the advertising agency. Do I still own that? If your work, mom, is, has nothing to do with what you do, for example, I would what you are employed for. For example, you're a copywriter mm-hmm. and then decide you wanted to run a blog. Um, even if you were using um, the company's equipment or facilities, you still own the rights to the blog because it has no connection. But to I that. can't be blogging about my work product, right? Don't blog about your work product. Yeah, like, like we made a pitch to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but that one is that not, will get you fired. That will get you fired. And that's, mm-hmm. not, a, that's not a copyright issue. That's a that, That's more like stupid. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Disclosure. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Conflict of interest issue. But um, for purposes of copyright, if you wrote something like that, you'd still own the rights to that specific article that you wrote. But um, yeah, you'd probably get in trouble and get, get fired. Now, if it's an output that you do in the course of your work, meaning let's say you're an ad writer, and you produce copy for the company, and then obviously that copy is owned by the company and you have no rights over it. Although, um, since games make so much more money than, you know, uh, books and um, print media, so suppose I'm a game developer, and then on my own time, while I'm employed by game developer A, I put out my own game. Does the game developer A own it? If you only employed me to make a specific game, Yes. Meaning, you employed me to make an RPG game, very clear sa contract ko, and then I made RPG games for you, then you own it. Yeah. But I made, say, um, whatever, some other random game, um, na hindi RPG, RPG, what you can say is, no, I did not make that game in the course of my employment, because in my employment, you specifically hired me just to make this type of games. Ngayon, if ang, ang employment mo nakasulat is, we're hiring you to think of ideas to make games where we can make money or we can use as IP and mas generic. Then, then they have a claim. Oh, then, then all of it is theirs. Yeah, and if you think of a fantastic game that is going to make you a billionaire, quit your job first. Quit your first. job. Oh. And then, you know, let a little time pass before you release it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, a problem that a lot of freelance writers and freelance creatives have in the Philippines is 
making singil. Kasi alam mo naman sa Pilipinas, mm. ikaw na yung pinagkautangan, ikaw pa yung nahihiyang maningil. Correct. Suppose, you know, months have passed and you remain unpaid and this is something that mm. we all have experienced. So what can you do? What if you're tired of calling their accounting every week and hearing na, um, it's for signature. Uh, oh. Hindi, alam mo, if it's not more than 400,000, just go through small, you, you go to small claims court na. There's a small claims court? Oh, small claims court and it's fairly straightforward and it's nice kasi if you can prove na they owe you money, the court will just direct them to pay dahil it's such a, and it's like a day, like it's not, it's very fast. Um, Where is this small claims court? Is it online? No, no, you have to go, you have to file an actual plea. And you don't have to file, uh, to, to have a filing fee that is more than what you're trying to collect? Uh, uh, it's not, uh, no, it's it's small and bawal ang abogado sa small claims court because right. they think na lawyers will drag the case and it's yes. going to become mm -mm. worse, which is probably correct. Uh, also, we won't be able to afford the lawyer if correct. it's a slow, small ca it's claims a small court. No? So, minsan, pag ganyan, ang, kaya, ang, ang utang sa'yo is 450 or 500,000 pesos. Ang suggestion ko sa friends ko who actually ask me who want to go through small claims, i-wave mo na yung ano, yung excess, yung 50 or 100. So, just claim up to 400. And para, then you can go to small claims para small. Kasi kung nag-450 ka, then you need to hire a lawyer. Then you need to, ano, and then you have to actually go through the process. Ngayon, yung tip ko naman dyan, kung gusto mo na mag-small claims ka lang forever, tapos ang service mo is like a bundle of services that's worth, say, 1.5 million pesos. Break it down <laughs> into smaller into claims. Into increments of 400,000. <laughs> Until you actually get to, to the amount that you're trying to get. And then, I suppose um, I've written a book and then I give it to a publishing house. Is it like I license it out to them and they own it? for the duration of the of the print run whatever assuming na walang ano agreement it's just first publication ha huh? mm -hmm. they're, they're just um, the first first public distribution lang. okay so um, if you if you give it to a publishing house and then they publish it then their rights to their right to publish it really just is for that one time na you for one print run one print run ah so if they want if if it's a hit and they want to do another print then run they have to go to you oh uh -uh. And and you have the right to charge more royalties, yeah, of course. right? We, nego we negotiate. We negotiate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually, if you're a fairly unpopular writer, then it's a good idea to ano to limit the number of print runs and not be like parang yung talk about print runs rather than time, like a right to publish for five years. Yeah, talk about print runs rather, rather than, than durations. Duration, yes. Uh -huh. And then uh, suppose I were a painter, and then I sell my painting. To, to a collector, do I still have rights over it? It's because as in, they, can they put it on a t-shirt? Can they put it in an auction? What? It's the same principle as the letter. But you I, only own the actual painting. Oh, I own the actual painting. So, in this, but my ownership of the painting is absolute, meaning I really own the painting. If I want to sell it, I can sell it. If I want to donate it to a friend, then I can donate it. But I cannot make copies of that painting and then like... I cannot license out the image for t-shirts yes. or whatever. But the painter actually keeps the right. So, if the painter wanted to... Um, wanted to turn it into a t-shirt, he still can turn it into a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. This has been happening a lot lately na a collector will buy a painting from an artist and then turn around and put it on auction. Suppose at auction he sells it for 20 times what he paid the painter. Does the painter have a right to any of that? Doon, wala na. Kasi yun yung same principle. Dahil um, the actual object, you sold it. Pero let's say if you sell the sculpture, if you sell a painting, and then they manage to flip it and sell it for more, ano? Let's but, but somebody was telling me that if you re if you sell something, um, the the or the artist is still entitled to like three percent or something. If you resell, pero ano yun eh? Depende. I mean, pero agreement na yun eh. We're just talking about uh, ano? What's under the law? Yung parang ano? Yeah. And really, pag ganon, hindi na. You keep the copyright over the actual thing that you delivered. And it's also unenforceable because you can't keep tabs on your painting forever. Forever, yeah. Okay, and then and then this is a more common problem. I've written a song. Suppose the song becomes, um, well, not exactly a hit, but popular. And then somebody sings it on YouTube without my knowledge. Is that kosher? First off, um, copyright infringement issue. Yeah, because um, your rights over the song is still... It's still yours. So even your right to perform it, it's it's it's. But, but YouTube is full of people doing cover versions. You yeah. mean they all pay? Okay, first off, you can stop it. Like you can actually write to YouTube and say that's my song, take it down. If you don't want to, and then that person is monetizing your yeah. cover songs mo, it actually will go to the actual publisher. So sometimes, um, pinapabayaan niya ng mga publishers kasi even if it's being covered by so many people, they're not making money out of it. The original publisher is still making money out of it. Ad revenue. 
So YouTube knows. I don't think it's an issue. It's a fairly common practice, and mm -hmm. then the artist naman still has the right to like shut it all down if they want to. Yeah, because um, it's funny because um, in the digital age, a lot of people listen to their if, listen to music on YouTube. Yeah, ako. especially covers. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the covers are better than the original. Kasi. Um, I think artists and recording studios um, allow it because una it's a marketing thing. They can make money out of it. Okay. Suppose I publish a story, and then I go to the movies, and then the story of the movie is suspiciously similar to my story. That gets complicated. Oh, no? that gets very complicated. Because una, no one really has a copyright to an idea. Pero if it's strikingly similar, and it's basically almost like kinopeng na talaga yung plot. Mm -hmm. Outside of changing the names of the characters, it's basically. Of course, if they're really stupid, they'll use the same names. So, uh, it's, which makes your life easier. You know, it makes your yeah. life easier, yeah. So, yun yung un, I think it's a matter of evidence. Of course, you also have to prove how they've managed to get a hold of your uh, idea. First, you have to prove that you originated this idea, uh, you know, that's where your drafts come in. Uh, and, then, and then you also have to spy on them. Oh, and then connect. Then you have to establish that you have something in common, like a friend who has uh, seen your story, exactly. has told someone in And has company. managed to access that, diba? Okay, and then during election season, you have all these horrible vans going around with election songs that are based on existing music. Yeah. Do they need permission from the songwriter to do that? Yes. Dapat but talaga. do they actually? No one does it. I mean, no. I'm, I'm guessing sa national, I'm guessing lang, hindi ko alam. I'm guessing on the national platform. Like, the candidates for barangay chairman. Yeah, yan siguro. Talagang you just probably have to let it go kasi you won't be able to keep tabs on everyone. But if you really wanted to um, stop them, you can. You, you, you can, except uh, that uh, by the time it goes to court, tapos na yung tapos election. election yeah. Nanalo na sila. Oh, oh. So, yeah, so um, if a politician you hate is using your song at a campaign rally, what can you do? Kunyari, this is big time. This is a national campaign. Uh, you can really demand that the, the person stop it. Or you get paid. Uh, actually, you, you can do both. Um, una is demand future use, meaning um, starting this date, hindi mo na pwedeng gamitin yan. So I'm, ano, I'm, uh, I'm demanding that I stop using my song. One. And then pangalawa is, you have to pay me for all the times that you've actually used the song. Because you used it. So, what is that? You need to pay for that. Yeah. For that. So, for, for singing contests, kunyari, televised um, reality show competitions, every time you sing a cover of a song, the songwriter gets paid. Yes. Actually, I think that's really how a lot of songwriters make money. Kasi and then they license it for ads, for ads and, and whatnot. For elevator genius. music. Yeah. Actually, if you're elevator music, I feel like a lot of money is there. Because... Hindi ka naman papalitan eh. <laughs> That's true. And you can track how many times the elevator has gone up and down. Yeah. And so, what is fair use? Okay, generally you have full control over your art, over your creation. Pero um, meron ding rights na binibigay generally to the public to be able to use your work in a very limited way for purposes of criticism. Yeah, you, if, what if you're writing a movie review and mm. you have a little excerpt? Let's, like, say, let's say a novel is um, 100 pages. And then I publish like 10 or 15 or a chapter. Tapos I said it's fair use yan kasi when you review it, that's probably not going, hindi papasok. Dahil too substantial, eh. you don't really need to, to publish a chapter for you to be able to write a review. Pero let's say, ang gusto kong sabihin is this person is a racist or this person is a horrible human being. Mm -hmm. So I get small sentences, small images, small descriptions din sa book to support my argument. And that's fair use. A lot of contemporary artists, they take existing work, say photographs, and then they incorporate Incorporate it into their art, and, and and then it becomes a Louis Vuitton bag or something. Yeah, that's not fair use, ha. Lalo na if you're going to make money out of it. So, dapat it, it should not so, be commercial. So, uh, so as a rule, if you're going to invoke fair use, you better not be making money. tons of money out oh, of it, oh, or I mean, any money at all. That's an, that's infringing. But we see it a lot with in contemporary art, di ba? Yung the images are reused from you know so, something in the public domain, which. Which reminds me, what is in the public domain? Because, <laughs> diba, oh, copyright ownership is not forever. Okay. So it, it it exists for the length of the artist's life, and mm -hmm. then when that artist dies, may plus fifty years. Um, but can't the estate keep renewing it endlessly? No. no? Fifty years lang talaga. That's and what why, about for works of art? For, it's the same. Uh, basta attributable. 
meaning kaya lang ako siyang gumawa. Ngayon, kung pseudonym naman siya, meaning ano ka, anonymous, it's the moment of publication, 50 years. So, After that, it's in the public domain. And then it's in the public domain. Ngayon, if it's in the public domain, parang infringement na mangyayari kasi everyone can use it for whatever purpose na they want. That's why in Disney, di ba, madaming yeah. pumasok sa public public domain. That's true, oo. Oh, oh. Their back catalog. Oh, their back catalog. Oh. Yeah, going back to fair use, a lot of us who have blogs, um, we need visuals. So we go online, we search for um, visuals. How do we know that it's safe to use them? Um, generally, I think it's a good idea to just assume that you can't because people will have copyright, copyright over it. Well, like what if there are stills from movies that, that are being promoted? I think the stills from movies, if you can um, claim that you're using it under, uh, under fair use, then maybe it can. But let's say you're just using it as a way to kind of like give color to an article which doesn't have any connection to the movie. And I think that one can be um, can be um, a copyright copyright issue. What if they only use not your entire artwork but a portion of it? Uh -oh. And then you can recommend uh, you you can recognize a hand yeah. from from your work that ends up in a collage. I think there's there's a case for copyright um, copyright infringement there because um, going back to what I discussed earlier, there's the issue of moral rights and economic rights. So that one is actually part of Moral rights, eh, among others, eh. Because um, no one's allowed to um, mutilate, basically, your your work without, ano, without your consent. And in that sense, someone actually cut up your work and then put it as a as a, as a part of their artwork. They basically um, stole your rights over your ownership rights over your work. Yeah, or put it on a T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, ngayon, your argument, naman, would be like, no, I just got it from a magazine or I just got it from a newspaper. And I, I bought the newspaper, so I own that. Yeah. Photo, but um, the the author or the um, the creator of that photo, for example, only gave the magazine kasi the right eh, the right to um, actually publish it for that specific instance. Uh -huh. And ikaw naman ang right mo over that magazine na you hot is to own the magazine. The, the magazine itself, uh -huh. as in you have the right to read it in the bathroom uh -huh. or give it to someone else. Yeah, but you don't have the right to basically cut it up, put it in a painting, turn it into something else, and then sell it sell it to another another person. That one is, ano na, kasi parang you created the, you, you create derivative works from yeah. the original, original artwork. And then this is more complicated. Memes. Suppose somebody posted a really funny picture of you in their Instagram, uh -oh. and then it becomes a meme. What rights do you have over your picture? Technically copyright infringement, pero memes are a creature kasi na no one has any control over. So parang, if you become a meme, <laughs> the first issue is who do you? Who do you sue? If it becomes viral, are you going to sue the millions of people who shared it? It's really not. Uh, no, it's you really can just not say worth. thank you for making me famous. You know? uh, thank you for making me famous, or like, parang randomly, mamili ka ng limang taong you will sue. Limang tao na ida demand mo. Demand mo, pili ka yung mga lima na hindi mo gusto, and then sila yung sue mo. It gets very complicated, like um, techniques. Um, kunyari, uh, there was a time in the 90s where um, Jennifer Aniston's character in Friends got a haircut and then everybody called it the racial yeah. and then all these salons offered the racial. Yeah. Uh, does the hairstylist of Friends have any right over the racial as made in salons all over the world? Yeah, the technique, I don't I don't think so. Kasi parang unless there's technical innovation or it's a very specific... Yeah, and the earlier incarnation with that would be the Vidal Sassoon haircut. I think calling it the racial might be copyright infringement because obviously you're referencing a TV show. If so they can call it, you know, the one on that TV show, wink wink. <laughs> 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 or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the style of cutting that hair is not copyrightable. So what is plagiarism? Plagiarism is not a legal it's not a legal concept. Eh. It's an ethical construct. In the mm -hmm. sense that plagiarism is basically you using someone else's work and claiming that you you, yes. you made it. Um most of the time it's copyright infringement. Meaning if I stole steal your short stories and then I say that I wrote it, then it's it's both plagiarism and copyright. Copyright infringement. But let's say um, several, like a hundred years from now, naging public domain na yung stories. I take it, I say I wrote it. What ang copyright infringement na nangyari dahil everyone can do whatever they want now. You mean that. I can claim to have written the complete works of William Shakespeare? Yes, you can. If you want to, I mean, everyone will think you're insane. Pero, yes. pero you can. And I, you can you can pick something obscure. Yeah, pick something obscure. I mean, legally, you won't get in trouble. But of course, um, ethically, ethically, uh, that's well, you're a schmuck. Uh, oh, yeah. you're a schmuck. And then even industries, because it's different. Different approach. For example, in the academic, in the academic, 
super specific. Like, yeah, like if you plagiarize, you're kicked out. Pero kaya me as a lawyer in the legal profession, we copy contracts from each other all the time because we're um, because precedent is so important to us. Yes. Na sometimes what we do is okay, this contract work. We just need to t- tweak it a little bit. So let's not reinvent the wheel. We we'll copy this contract and then just change. Yeah, we it like the w- wording. It's very exact. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we'll copy this. Someone else wrote it. Um, sa, some other negotiation. So actually, at this point, no one really knows who wrote the contract. Right. Na, kasi I don't know any lawyer who would actually draft a contract from scratch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we should na. ask for discounts, no? <laughs> hey, you have a template, na eh. Oh, it depends, yeah, na. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, generally, um, it, in plagiarism, it depends on um, it depends on the specific industries. Then, if it's really morally. Um, morally corrupt or ethically dubious or it's just yung general practice of yung of yeah and thing. um one form one common form that is sort of like plagiarism is knockoffs you know how in the fashion industry the, there's something that the gods of fashion uh, uh, de- decide um, this year skinny jeans are out and um, really maluwag pants are in and so the Prada Gucci's of the world come out with really maluwag pants. And then soon, in the high street fashion stores, in, in the h and in, in, in the Uniqlo's, you see similar clothes to what was in the runways in Milan. Is mm. that? It's easy if it's uh, like parang real copy. Like talagang basically, um, um, this table, I create another table exactly like this. Then mm-hmm. that one talaga clear na your um, you're infringing on my intellectual. Then topic. everyone has in- infringed on IKEA. Pero yun nga, <laughs> oh, pero kasi kung nare, um, some things kasi na parang um, ano na eh, like you can't really claim that you own it. For example, um, generally jeans look a certain way. Yes. So if you come up with jeans that are either a little bit tighter or a little bit more flared, um, it's hard to claim that you're the inventor, or you're the originator. Eh. So um, yeah, I don't know how people can claim to have invented types of sneakers. When they oh, all look the same to me. Exactly. So I think it's really more of, and I think that um, sa fashion kasi it's less an issue of copyright and more an issue of trademarks. Uh, yeah, so if you have a fake Gucci logo on it, uh, then they will haul your ass will, to jail. Uh, they will have, uh, it's a trademark issue. Of course, I know absolutely nothing about it, but what's piracy? <laughs> <laughs> piracy? Well, basically, it's the same principle. Like, it's basically stealing your work and then making money out of it. Probably. What if I download it and I just watch it? By myself. I said, nobody else watches it. I don't charge money for it. Is it a crime? Technically, yes. <laughs> I don't think anyone. <laughs> I don't think anyone. Of course, like I've never done that myself. <laughs> I've never done it also. <laughs> I've never done it, yes. <laughs> Technically, there's a whole ad <laughs> sat mm-hmm. movies before. Oh, you watch yeah, yeah. It, it's your last cue to go to the bathroom. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then you come back. I see it's a crime. It's yes. theft. Yeah, it's the same principle, actually. Because that ad is so slow that you can't go to the bathroom and then go get popcorn. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So it's the same principle. It's really, it really is, it really is theft of intellectual talk. The mm-hmm. problem is that the um, intangible nature of our creations, we don't think of it as something that we own. Yes. Especially for Filipinos. Ang baba ng tingin natin kaya we don't pay for it. Like parang ginawa mo lang naman to eh. So, exactly. The assumption na everybody can write naman eh. As in anyone can sign their name. Tsaka technically, anyone can build a house. It's not going to be a nice one. But you can probably, you know, put four pillars and a roof over something. Yeah. And it's technically a house. Pero it's the same principle. Kaya nga lang yung intangible nature niya kasi people don't think of it as a real as real ownership. And I think especially with writers or artists, it would be good, I think, if um, if especially Filipinos um, and artists and writers, they start thinking of what they own as having real, actual monetary value. And that happens to a lot of, you know, kids who publish their start. stuff online. Mm. And then because they have millions of followers, some publisher comes along and I don't know if they even read the terms of their publishing contract or if they have publishing contract. But I remember when I was a kid, the opportunity to get published the first time. So yeah, it's like, wow, nakit. and then you don't even care about even the money. Care. Like, mm-hmm. they'll give you like a hundred pesos and excited. Ka na yeah, yeah my, my only advice to writers and other creatives is you have to care about the money. You have to care. Or uh, if you cannot care about the money, befriend someone who can help you. Yeah, who, who can, uh, who can <laughs> be indignant uh, every time that you are cheated. Yeah, and I think everyone kind of needs to um to cooperate 
kasi if you have like a bunch of writers who give who give stuff away for free or who don't have who don't put a lot of value on what they do supposed to like other people who do value their work and who make who do it for a living may nalo palagi yung mga taong bumibili ng art dahil may palaging taong willing to give it away for for nothing right and you've decided you know to make it sort of your advocacy to to promote you know the rights of creative people and why did you think of this in the first place? I feel like, um, especially with um, with writers and artists in Pilipinas, um, they sign every. They, they don't know how to read the contract. They don't know what they're giving away. Yeah, because after the first, you know, the first line of legalese, their eyes glaze over. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I know writers think that contracts are bad writing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I get that because the first time I read the contract, I thought it was bad writing. But going back to what I was saying before, the legal profession, because precedent is so important, so yeah. kaya inulit ulit mo lang yung language, because clear na kagad yan. Ngayon, I, I, ang suggestion ko with with writers, especially those who make a living out of writing, is to at the very least know what they're giving away. If you really, ang plan mo talaga is just to get published because you just want the exposure. Yeah. Then at the very least, you should, it should be clear to you that that's what you're doing. I think the um, problem is most people just sign a contract and then they just believe whatever is being told to them because they don't know what they what they actually own. Yes. Or even yung punare, writing, like you write an article, give it to a newspaper. In your head, that's never that's not yours na anymore. So you pa yung hihingi ng permission sa newspaper if you can republish it. Mm -hmm. in a book or yeah. whatever mm -hmm. when in fact under the you law you own that oh, oh sila lang yung binigay mo ng limited right to publish it once nung time na binigay mo yung submission so i think it, a part of it is also like parang empowering lang artists and writers to realize what they what what it means to own something to own intellectual property and what what the value of that is kasi um there are businesses na literally ang ano lang nila ang the way they get wealthy is buying a lot of um, ideas yes. for cheap, transforming it into something, and then royalties. Yeah, but think of people like us yeah, who have to <laughs> buy cat food with what we earn. Yeah. yeah. So, do you think it's a good idea for um, writers, musicians, artists to uh, to already designate kind of a an executor, like a somebody in charge of their estate? of their of their um, body of work. I think if no one knows you, then it's probably not. It's probably, you know, jumping the gun <laughs> jumping a little. Gun. Yeah. But if you're if you have a fairly uh, if you're fairly popular and then there are a lot of ways to create derivative works from your intellectual property, for example, you're a comic book writer mm -hmm. or, a, or an illustrator, it's probably a good idea. Because um, I think, ang, minsan ang, especially now with all of the streaming um, services, yes. and they're transforming all of this, like, um, yeah, original, everybody needs content. Yes. If you're, if you're relatively popular, it's a good idea to, to, to have someone that, no, parang kind of like a business manager or a, a friend who can do that for you. Yes, and I apologize in advance to you because a lot of people are going to get in touch with you with questions <laughs> about their rights as creatives. <laughs> but, you know, since we're the sanity maintenance program, I have to ask you, how do you maintain your sanity assuming you still have it sincerely i really just stop talking to people <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, when, uh, no, when, when the world is noisy you just, world is, uh, yeah most of the time you know, if, if, if i feel like i'm going nuts it's really just because everyone's there's just too much stimulus eh. right so at that point i usually just like really coop up and then airplane mode yeah like yes. play, play, play playstation 4 and then just kind of like not interact for a while. Well, Some of my friends would be very worried during that time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sense. it's like um, stay indoors until you start thinking about Mumu. Oh. <laughs> then you have to leave the house. Have yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. right. Thanks very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah. Very informative.